Stephen Cohen, and for decades he taught and researched Russian politics at Princeton and NYU, and he joins us tonight. Professor Cohen, thanks a lot for coming on. So to start with the, the first of these two stories, the president is accused of passing critical intelligence to the Russians in a meeting at the White House. Do you believe that happened? No, and nor have I in these decades you mentioned ever heard uh, an elected member of Congress uh, say that we should have no relations with the Russians at all. Presumably that would include uh, nuclear weapons control. Uh, when I see, I guess it was a Democrat, it's on the bottom of your screen, uh, asking what are the Russians doing in the White House anyway? Well, they're doing with President Trump the national security of our nation because what's at stake here is a proposal by Putin of Russia, by Trump of America, to join hands in an alliance against international terrorism. Right. And I would have asked you, if you had asked me a few days ago, what's the number one threat to the United States today, I would have said international terrorism. I don't know if you agree, Tucker, but it's certainly up there. Today, I would say, <laughs> It's this assault on President Trump uh, because it's been going on a year. And can we be clear, what he's being accused of is treason. This has never happened in America, mm -hmm. that there's a Russian agent in the White House. And we've had a whole array of allegations from Putin helped him get in the White House to his associates are doing wrong things with Russians, that Flynn did something wrong in talking, uh, his former national security advisor did something wrong with talking to the Russian ambassador. There's no evidence that there was any wrongdoing, and indeed, Flynn should have talked to the Russian ambassador. That was his job. So this is beyond belief now and has become, by this I mean this assault on Trump and his loyalty, this has become a national security threat to us in itself. So is, is, is the heart of this change, so as I noted a minute ago, Russia went from being, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty much an afterthought to most people to being at the very center of this very complex conspiracy theory. Is that all about trying to get Trump out of office, do you think, or are there other motives? Well, I think two motives have driven this, I think, false narrative against Trump, that he's somehow uh, a Kremlin agent. There have been two forces. One is the Clinton wing of the Democratic Party, which doesn't want to admit she lost the election, wants to say, I, Clinton, won, but Putin stole it from me. And that may be because she wants to run again. I think that's a possibility. At the same time, there has long been in Washington a powerful, let's call it the fourth branch of government, the intelligence services, who have opposed any rapprochement or cooperation with Russia. Remember, in 2016, President Obama worked out a deal with Russian President Putin for military cooperation in Syria. He said he was going to share intelligence with Russia, just the way Trump and the Russians were supposed to do the other day. Right. Our Department of Defense said it wouldn't share intelligence. And a few days later, they killed Syrian soldiers, violating the agreement, and that was into that. So we can ask, who is making our foreign policy in Washington today? Well, who is making our foreign I mean, the, the president is elected in part to do that. He ran explicitly on a closer relationship with Russia. Not everyone is for that. Right. But he won the election by saying out loud, we have a common enemy in Islamic terror. And so isn't it constitutionally the president's role to determine our posture toward the rest of the world? Isn't that the whole point of electing a president? Yeah, and so you and I have to, have to ask a, a, a subversive question. Are there really three branches of government or is there a fourth branch of government? these intel services. What we know as a fact is that Obama tried, not very hard, but he tried for a military alliance with Putin in Syria against terrorism and it was sabotaged by the Department of Defense and its allies in the intelligence services. Trump says, he said on the campaign trail, wouldn't it be great to cooperate with Russia? My answer is, it would be great, and Trump seems to want that to happen, but he's being thwarted. Every time he gets close, we get a new leak of Wait, a story. If, if what you're saying is true, and that his attempt to change the course of American foreign policy was sabotaged by a government agency without his permission, I mean, that is totally outside the bounds of constitutional government. I hope you're I hope you're wrong. I suspect you're not. Professor Cohen, thanks for joining us.